Hey everyone, switch to Two Guys Tech. With all the stay at home and shelter in place requirements that we've got going on right now, I thought it'd be a good time to do a little bit more in depth tour of Two Guys Tech's server infrastructure and virtualization that we use as part of bringing you the videos and shows on this channel. So if that's interesting, stick around. This video today is sponsored by the letter S for swag. swag. If you're looking for stylish nerd clothes, then look and feel great to wear and support our channel, look no further. Check the link below in the description for more. I figured the best place to start is with the hardware first, so let's take a trip down to the garage. Here's basically everything infrastructure-wise that we use for the studio. Let's start at the top and work our way down. Starting with our Synology NAS that we lovingly named Sumo. This is a model DS2415 Plus with 12 bays. Currently, it's fitted out with 11 8TB Seagate Ironwolf drives, with the 12th bay being a 500GB Samsung Evo 840 SSD to act as a cache drive for better performance. The total storage comes in at around 72TB. We've had this NAS for a long time now, and we absolutely love it. The thing is a total workhorse, and any day of the week, I'd recommend Synology to people looking for a reliable and extensible NAS. The NAS is responsible for a lot of our infrastructure. It stores all of our raw and finished 4K video footage, acts as an NFS data store target for our virtual host, and does backups of the physical and virtual machines on the network. Next off is essentially our core network switch. This is a Dell PowerConnect 5524 that we picked up on eBay last year for about 64 bucks. This switch has also been a great piece of gear. It's quiet, has 24 ports of 1 gigabit base T and 2 ports of 10 gigabit SFP+. Before this we were running an older HPE 48 port managed ethernet switch that lacked 10 gigabit SFP plus connections which we needed for the upgrade of our virtual host. We needed the 10 gigabit SFP uplinks to maximize data rates into our LAN. The Synology NAS has four 1 gigabyte Ethernet ports that we've bonded into a single 4 gigabit LACP trunk so we can get as much super as we could between the NAS and the virtual host. We're currently running the SFP Plus connections as active passive to the virtual host since we can't use 20 gigabit worth of throughput anyway. And for us, the redundancy of being able to fail over to the other connection if we lose the primary uplink was more valuable. The switch is broken into two untagged or port based VLANs inside and outside. The outside VLAN is where we terminate our internet connection as well as the outside Ethernet interfaces of our ESXi host. And the inside VLAN is our LAN and is secured and protected by our virtual PFSense firewall running on the host. Now onto the heart of our infrastructure, our virtual host we lovingly named Big Boy. We made a video a while back about the building of Big Boy and the video blew up about a year later. If you haven't seen that video, you can click the card in the upper right corner and check it out. Here's a quick rundown of its specs. The host chassis is a Dell Precision T7600 running two 8-core Intel Xeon E5-2680 CPUs clocked in at 2.7 GHz with 96 gigs of RAM. In a bit we'll get into the details of how the data stores are set up in ESXi and how many VMs we're currently running. And last but not least, protecting all of the gear here is an APC SmartUps X2000. Admittedly, this is way overkill for our little setup here. Under the current load, the UPS reports this current runtime is an hour. So now you've seen the physical gear, let's talk about the host, what it runs, why we chose the software and the systems that we use. Currently, Big Boy runs VMware ESXi 6.7 as our hypervisor of choice. There's a lot of reasons why we chose to go with ESXi over the other options like Proxmox, XPCNG, or even just running straight up Docker containers. But suffice to say, the biggest reason is that VMware is still the king of data center virtualization, and running ESXi in vCenter helps me keep sharp on my skills for my professional life and lets me experiment on my own. I know a lot of you, and I mean a lot of you, have really strong opinions about which hypervisor you should run, whether it's uh, VMware, or it's XPNG, or Proxmox, or just use containers and don't do virtualization at all. And you know, it really comes down to what do you want to get out of your home lab? Um, you know, for me, using VMware benefits me because I use it in my professional life. You know, um, being able to do things at home that I can't do at work and build my knowledge here, and then that directly benefits me when I go to my day job. And you know, with containers, still you cannot yet virtualize Windows Server or a PFSense firewall, so there's still some things you can't containerize. But you know, it's a really personal decision, so make that decision based on what you want to get out of your lab. Anyways, now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at the basics of our virtual host setup. Let's start with networking and the vSwitch setup. We have a very simple and straightforward standard vSwitch setup on the host with two defined vSwitches. One for the internal LAN with two 10 gigabit uplinks, and one for the Fios internet with two 1 gigabit uplinks for the outside. There's a lot more you can do with your virtual switches, especially if you have multiple hosts. But since we're currently using a single host with a very straightforward approach, this is all we need. Now let's take a look at our data stores that are configured as part of the host. Big Boy currently has three different tiers of data storage. Tier 1 is a single dedicated 500GB NVMe drive. 
Being that it's the highest performance tier, the VMs that are stored here are VMs that need to have the fastest access to their disks. Next is our Tier 2 storage, which is a RAID array of old SSD disks that are hanging off of a Dell Perk H400 card that we bought off eBay. Combined, these disks aren't as fast as NVMe storage, but they're still pretty fast, so we target VMs that don't need the fastest access to their disks, but still want them to be performant. Last is our Tier 3 storage, which is provided by Sumo, our Synology NAS we showed you earlier. There are a lot of different ways you can connect external storage up to a virtual host. ESXi supports NFS, iSCSI, and Fiber Channel. All of these have their own benefits, drawbacks, and complexities. We chose to mount the data store using NFS over iSCSI to our Synology because iSCSI volume allocation takes away from the available storage on the NAS whether it's used or not, and NFS mounts essentially share all available space on the NAS. Okay, that basically sums up the hardware configuration of the host. Let's get to the virtual machines and what they are and what we use them for. As of right now, we're running 10 VMs of various OS and resource allocation. This isn't the highest level it's ever been. At times we've had as many as 15 VMs operating at a time. We'll run through these really quickly. Let's start at the top of the list with our VM Ansible. Ansible is a simple, low-power Linux VM whose sole purpose is to run, well, Ansible. What is Ansible? Ansible is an open-source software provisioning, configuration management, and application deployment tool that was created by Red Hat and is freely available to use. We use Ansible as a means of maintaining patch management for all of our Linux VMs that we have running on our virtual host. We've created really simple playbooks that keep the VMs up to date and reboot it at off hours. Yes, this is something we could containerize, and it's something we're planning to do in the future. Next on the list is Charon. Charon is your standard Windows 10 Pro VM that is basically there in case we ever need a dedicated jump box or Windows system that isn't physically at our desks. You know, it never hurts to have a spare Windows PC around. Third on the list is our Nextcloud VM. Nextcloud is essentially an open source replacement for Dropbox. It is so much more than that, but essentially that's the purpose that John and I use it for. We use Nextcloud to copy and synchronize the current video projects we're working on between our home PCs. This way I can film video and record voiceover and ship it over to John's PC so he can begin editing everything in Adobe Premiere. When John's over at the studio, he can open up the exact same Premiere project on our editing system here in the studio and continue where he left off. Especially during this pandemic, having the means of sharing gigabytes of data between each other fast and securely and without having to pay piles of cash to cloud providers to house the data has been really great. We can probably containerize this VM as well since Nextcloud runs on a LAMP stack on Ubuntu for us. Again, another thing to add to the list. Next is our Plex VM running on Ubuntu. Plex is essentially a streaming media service for watching video, listening to music, and so on. We use Plex to store all of our finished 4K videos to stream and share with others we want to watch a video before it gets released. It's made our life super easy to share our content privately before it's ready to upload to YouTube. Again, another thing that we could containerize, but honestly, I don't know if we would. Plex can be a hog when it comes to transcoding 4K content down to 1080p to stream, and having it in its own VM means we can place restrictions on the VM so it can never clobber the rest of the system's running. Polaris is our new Windows Server 2019 system that will soon act as our ADS infrastructure for Windows machines that are currently running on the LAN. We have another VM, Sol, that's running Server 2012 and is currently pulling that duty and we plan to migrate the FISMO roles over to the new server and shut down the old Server 2012 R2 VM in the future. Prometheus is an Ubuntu Linux VM which monitors practically everything running on our infrastructure. We use Prometheus and Grafana to build pre-dashboards of those statistics. Here's a good example of one of those dashboards monitoring our virtual host. I'm a huge stats nerd and a sucker for pretty dashboards and Grafana serves them up beautifully. Next is our firewall running PFSense. PFSense is an enterprise grade firewall appliance that runs OpenBSD. A long time ago we fell in love with PFSense and have long since abandoned using cheap physical hardware firewalls. PFSense protects our network, runs OpenVPN for remote access, and has a ton of additional packages and features that allow you to really lock down and control how you access in and out of your network. Check it out if you haven't heard of it. Just two more VMs left. Next is our Ubiquiti VM that's sole purpose is to run Unify to manage and control a network switch we have further into our network. We'd like to invest more into Ubiquiti hardware into the future, specifically Wi-Fi APs to better cover our studio and you need to have Unify up and running to do that. And last but not least is our VMware vCenter virtual appliance. vCenter isn't required if you're going to run a simple config on only one host. But with the licensing we bought, we have access to it so we're going to use it to manage Big Boy and potentially if we add another host in the future, we'll enable high availability and live migrations between those hosts. Just a few things to note, we're running 10 VMs right now and that's about 10 to 20% CPU usage on our host, meaning we've got a ton of compute left for adding more virtual machines. RAM on the other hand, we've been a bit too liberal and added a lot of RAM to a lot of virtual machines, so 
with the beauty of virtualization, we can claw some of that back if we need to add more for more VMs. Uh, another thing to add is that if you're interested in VMware and ESX and vCenter and all that kind of stuff, I recommend you join vMug, which is VMware's user group, and look into vMug Advantage. It, that's $200 a year, and what that gets you is essentially a big pile of enterprise licenses for things like vCenter and Fusion and VMware Workstation, just a ton of stuff that will help you essentially build an enterprise-grade uh, data center in your home lab and really help you build up those skills and knowledge. And for $200 a year, it's it's a no-brainer, right? It's not it's not a perpetual license, so you're gonna have to get it every single year your license will expire, but it's really, it's a great thing if you're serious about VMware. And that's gonna do it for our behind the scenes of how we basically do our virtual infrastructure stuff here at Two Guys Tech. I genuinely hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed making it. Would love to know what you think, so get down those comments, let us know. If this is the first time you've seen us, please consider subscribing because it really helps us out in case us making these videos. We've got a website where you can check out all the results for the other videos we made, all the testing we do on fans and CPU coolers and all that kind of great stuff. If you're a Twitter or Instagram user, consider following the channel at Two Guys Tech. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon.